Does it bother you that that Trump guy insults you all the time? Because it really bothers my friends and me. Oh, Mary Catherine, it's very important to always remember you should never let anyone tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. Haters gonna hate, hate, hate. Shake it off. 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 <laughs> Good for you, Mary They're Catherine. Ready. Oh, yeah, okay. And okay. also, remember one more thing. Don't worry if you make a mistake, because Catholic people are very forgiving. Yeah, and also, one last thing I want to tell you, don't forget to say, Superstar! At this point, she needs to shake off the entire campaign crew and fire them all. I'll tell you why. Oh boy. All right. Uh, what's up, everybody? Carlton Flowers here with the Go Political channel. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the uh, Fox interview with Brett Bauer, Bayer, however you pronounce that. And I will probably be doing a series on this because there's several things that I want to discuss. Okay. And we're going to start with the end. Uh, with what happened, because I made some comments on uh, a previous video where I was alluding to the fact that there are some things that people do not realize that is the real problem, and uh, that I would explain it in a video. In defense of Kamala Harris, there are still a lot of people that support her. As a matter of fact, my big cousin, Tony, shout out to Tony in North Carolina and a couple other friends of mine, TB, she's out there probably watching this video. There are people who support Kamala Harris and that's okay. I've got people that follow my channel who are Democrats and that's okay. I want them here. Um, I constantly make the point that today's Democrats are not your parents, Democrats. This is a whole nother thing, a different ball of wax. This is a new flavor. Um, and in defense of Kamala Harris, which is going to be the point of this video, I think she has some uh, very inept what? people that are running her campaign. The people who are advising her, the people behind the scenes, are creating a disaster. And, and we can't really put this on her. She's been put in a very bad position from the jump, you know, since they forced her to the top of the ticket without a primary. And there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that are ruining her chances of winning this election. And this is within the Democratic Party. We're not going to, you know, talk about all of the policies that, you know, she's proposing that I disagree with. We're just going to talk about what they're doing that is sabotaging her chances to win. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to share with you a post from Kevin247. He's another black conservative content creator that I enjoy his information. And there's a couple posts that are on his community tab which support what I'm going to tell you. Because... The end of the Fox interview is indicative of my whole thesis statement, which is that Kamala's team, they're inept. They, they are the ones that are going to ruin this election for her and kill the chances for all of the Democrat supporters that are out there. So we're going to watch the end of that Fox interview where the uh, interviewer is saying, hey, they're, they're trying to cut this off. Uh, in fact, twice he brings up the fact that they're giving me a hard, you know, cut this thing, stop, stop the interview. But what people don't realize, it wasn't Fox that was saying stop the interview. It was Kamala's people, Kamala. It was Kamala's campaign folks, her handlers, that were saying stop this video because they knew that it was a train wreck. Okay, so let's jump over to Kevin247. I just saw this post this morning and this underscores what I was telling you about the handlers that were cut in that interview and the handlers that made such an embarrassing ending for cutting that thing short. So let's just read this. Kamala's in after last night interview with Brett Beyer. How do you say that right? Is it Beyer? Bauer? 
So the post says, my friend was in the camera crew for last night's interview with Brett Bauer and Kamala Harris. Kamala clearly struggled, as many people have pointed out, in, uh, well, discluding BSNBC and all of the liberal news media that think that it was the best interview ever and that she crushed it, it was great. Well, Kamala's own handlers don't agree with BSNBC, but it's their job to put a positive spin on it. After the interview concluded, she apparently refused to shake Brett's hand and called him dirty. Then she said, you're just another lousy MAGA nut job. Brett just laughed. She then started to tear up and said, we can edit that, right? Right? Then she went to her team and said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's over. At least she knew she messed up. Now, one thing I did notice a couple times during the interview, and you'll see it on the clip that I'm going to show you, is that she sounded like she was getting very upset and about to cry. It was on the verge of tears two or three times during this interview. And so that kind of uh, is underscored by this you know, statement. Uh, it validates the fact that it's probably true that she was upset to the point of tears. Um, and... In defense of Brett Bauer, I think he was cutting her off and interrupting because he was trying to get her to answer the questions that we want to hear. And that's what I'm going to get to in my series. Um, she's been taught to ramble on and to give canned answers. Instead of getting the answers out there, that could change the minds of the swing voters. Now, she's not going to change my mind, um, but there are swing voters who could vote for her and they're not going to because they're not getting the answers. And so Brett Bauer, Bayer, was trying to get her to those answers so people can understand what her true stances are. All right, so that's we'll get into that more on the next video. But let's go to this next post here. This is even more telling, guys. So Brad, Bad Ombre, I guess is the name on Twitter, uh, shares this post today. And it says, Major Drama. Within the Kamala Harris campaign this morning, a source reveals that Harris screamed at and angrily berated her campaign manager, Julie Chavez, for over 30 minutes on the phone this morning. The source shares that Chavez advised Kamala not to attend the Al Smith dinner. And that was the clip of the video that you saw in the beginning um, that they did in place of her showing up in person. Because it could send the wrong message and risk alienating LGBTQ and pro-abortion voters if she was seen cozying up the Catholics. So we got a lot of conflict here. Instead, Chavez suggested a compromise of sending in the poorly received video in lieu of an in-person appearance. Hmm. Chavez was in tears during the phone call as Kamala shredded her to pieces, called her an idiot, inept, horrible, at your effing job and told her that her stupid advice is going to be the reason she loses. The joy is gone. All right. I would agree with Kamala Harris there. And I've been saying all along, her handlers, her campaign people, uh, the Chavez person, they are inept and they are going to be the demise of the election for Kamala. I think that she's surrounded by people that are so far out of touch that she would be better off just going at it by herself. I could be her campaign manager and help her to do a lot better than what she is doing right now with common sense advice and understanding what people want to know about her, what people uh, want revealed. Uh, I would give her advice that would help her to come across as a real person instead of doing these skits, these acting things, the canned statements. I was born and raised in middle class family. <laughs> you know all of the standard canned answers that she gives that don't work. And instead of calling Kamala Harris stupid or an idiot, she's not stupid. She's done a lot in her career. Whether you agree with her policies or not, She's not an idiot. It's the handlers who are the idiots. Now, I tell you what, let's, before we go to the end of the video, let's just watch, let's watch the, the commercial in its entirety here on the New York Post YouTube channel. So this 
was the idea that her team had in place of going to the Al Smith dinner. No, they said skip it. And uh, it's been 40 years since both candidates have not attended the dinner, and it never works out well when you don't. Um, And this would have been, as some said, a layup for her. You're in New York, all right? Uh, There's Jewish people there, along with the Catholic people, and these are folks that normally support the Democratic Party, but they talked her into not going. So let's watch this video that she did and, and just... Kind of think about, well, how how does this come across? And do you think that this was a smart move or does it come off as cringe? And do you think that her campaign folks did the right thing in telling her to do this? So here we go. Let's watch the video. Just so you know, there will be a fact checker there tonight. Oh, that's great. Who? Jesus. And maybe don't say anything negative about Catholics. I would never do that no matter where I was. That would be like criticizing Detroit in Detroit. Does it bother you that that Trump guy insults you all the time? Because it really bothers my friends and me. Oh, Mary Catherine, it's very important to always remember you should never let anyone tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. Haters going to hate, hate, hate. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> Good for you, Mary They're Catherine. They're ready. Oh, yeah, OK. And also remember one more thing. Don't worry if you make a mistake, because Catholic people are very forgiving. Yeah. And also, one last thing I want to tell you, don't forget to say, superstar. <clears throat> okay, so what are your thoughts about that video? Do, do you think this did her any favors? Was that a good idea? Was that a good idea? I think her uh I think her campaign folks need to be fired for that. Uh No. That's not good. Okay, so We're going to jump over and watch the end of the interview. And then I'm going to make a few points about this. But we are going to see Brett Bauer, um, his reaction to Kamala's team cutting the interview short. And again, I put the blame on this catastrophic failure in recent polls. This falls squarely on the team. Now, before I play the video, let's just go to, um, I'm pulling up the Poly Market website, okay? Now, let me jump back over to the desktop. So what we see here is polymarket.com, and this is a betting website. It's not like a poll website, but what they're doing here is people are betting money, all right? Poly Market has been around for a long time, and people bet on events, the outcome of events, And they bet on elections, okay? And it's been fairly accurate, accurately predicting elections for probably the last, what, couple decades. And so, hmm, we saw her dip down to 38%. It's up to 39.8. Trump surges above 60% after the Fox interview. There was like a maybe a 15, 14, 15% 15 point differential before that interview and then uh, she plummeted after the interview. In fact, I think it might have been maybe 12, 10 to 12 point difference. And so that doubled after the Fox interview. And so that says, okay, the Fox interview did not go well despite what people say. It didn't do her any favors and it eroded the confidence of the betting community. Because after watching the interview, they're betting that Kamala is going to lose this election. They're putting their money down on Kamala losing. Okay, so that was a direct result of this. But now let's go to the end of this video and just watch. And I want you to listen to Kamala's voice. Listen to the shakiness of her voice. You're going to hear it at one point where it sounds like she's about to cry. She's very upset. And uh, like I said, that just kind of uh, validates the comments that were made on Kevin 24-7's sharing of the posts that were saying that she was in tears after this interview. So here we go. Let's watch the last couple minutes of this interview, and then we'll wrap up. Regine. That that we had an American military base that was attacked, where American soldiers 
suffered traumatic brain injuries and Donald Trump dismissed them as headaches, not to mention Madam how President, Donald Trump has, all of this money has treated and has talked about America's military years, and military service people calling them that suckers Hezbollah, and losers, Hamas, has diminished and the significance. We're talking over each other. I apologize. Well, I, and I, but, and I, I, wish, I would like that we would have a, a conversation that is grounded in full assessment of the facts which includes, I think this interview is supposed to be about the choices that your viewers should be presented about this election, and the contrast is important. Yes, ma'am. And, and on the subject of Iran, I am offering what should be an, an important contrast that is presented for folks to make a decision and there are that they feel. Who look at what the administration did and say and think differently. Madam Vice President, they're wrapping me very hard here. I hope you got to say what you wanted to say about Donald Trump. There are a lot of things There's that, more to say. I have there, much there more are to say, a lot actually. of things that people want to learn about you and your policies. Yes. And that's why we I invited invite you here. I invite everyone to go to KamalaHarris.com and you will see that I have 80 uh, pages of policies that are quite comprehensive and should be um, accessible to anyone who would like to read them. And it includes what I intend to do about affordable housing, what I intend to do about small businesses, what I do. And that's why we to invited to you here our economy, to see where you were in 2019 to, and to where you are now. America's military and ensure we have the most lethal and best fighting force in the world. Madam Vice President, and they're giving I, me a hard rap. Well, I thank you for the time. I thank you for the time. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe. Okay, so uh, that was that. <clears throat> And then after the uh, end of this interview, of course, after she smiled and thanked him, uh, we find out that she called him dirty and then refused to shake his hand. So it, it, it didn't end well. All right. So here's a couple things that um, something that I want to mention about just that part that further underscores the fact that her handlers, her campaign people are inept and they should all be fired. You heard her say suckers and losers, that Donald Trump called the military suckers and losers. Now, see, this has been debunked on Snopes, which is a liberal left-leaning website fact checker. The fact checkers usually fact check conservatives and Trump. They don't usually fact check the Democrats. Uh, but months, months ago, maybe what, two months ago, uh, this has come up. And it was several months ago when Snopes had debunked that whole lie that Donald Trump called people who have served in the military suckers and losers. But the Kamala handlers have told her to double down on this and use it. She used it in the presidential debate. Uh, she's used it in several speeches, and then she brings it up again now. And that is such poor advice. And why would you recommend to Kamala to keep leaning into that? leaning into an outright lie that Snopes is debunked and think that that's going to give you positive results. I think she knows better, but I think that her campaign folks are saying, push these points, give these standard answers when you are confronted. And so when you sit there and you repeat a lie that's been debunked on Snopes, and then you turn around and you say, I want people grounded in the facts, in the facts so that they can know what they need to know and help them make a decision to vote for me. What are they thinking? I mean, how, how's that supposed to work? You know, let me know, let me know. Am I thinking differently here? Or would you agree that her campaign folks are absolutely inept? They're pushing her to double down on a lie and then turn right around and say, I want people grounded in the facts. I don't know, guys. I, I, there's just no explaining that. There's no explaining that. Um, so the the second post that we saw on Kevin 24-7 that talked about her cursing out Chavez, um, some people might not believe that, but there have been several other reports that state that, you know, she's a real pressure cooker. Uh, she's a hot tamale when it comes to speaking to her people behind the scenes and that she uh, does lash out, that she does blow hot 
she does let people know what she thinks, that she has fired a lot of people that have worked for her. And over the last four years, and even when she was a senator and prosecuting attorney, people have said that it was very difficult to work for her because she was very demanding uh, of a boss, very brash, um, not very sympathetic, uh, and did not treat people well. So that is congruent with what we see in that post shared by Kevin 24-7 in that she cursed out her campaign manager. Um, I think that she needs to cuss them out and fire them and fire everybody else for pushing her into saying and doing stupid things like that skit that we saw. Uh, there is absolutely no reason that she should be plummeting like this. There's no reason at all. She could do this on her own and just be real. Uh, and we'll get more into that. I have several examples from this interview of what I would advise her to do where she would do a lot better in the polls uh, than what she's getting by these inept people that are um, managing her campaign. I mean, it's, it's just sad. So we will break that down. I'll get more into that. And like I said, I think even me as a conservative, I would do a much better job helping her. Um, I, I don't think it's fair. I think everything from the canned statements to the race issue, that's another video for another day, um, to these goofy skits, it, it's all a train wreck. And it doesn't have to be this way. So anyway... I'm looking forward to your comments. I want to know what you think. And if you're looking forward to the breakdown of the rest of the interview, let me know. And like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I'm glad to have you here. And again, shout out to my big cousin, Tony. Yay! Um, looking forward to your thoughts and my good friend, TB. And anyone and everyone else, Democrats, you're welcome here. I am a conservative, uh, but... I like to have the input and I like to know more about your line of thinking because a lot of the stuff that's going on or, you know, these strategies that they're putting forth, I don't get it. I don't get it. So I am looking forward to hearing your thoughts, to hear if you agree with me that they're screwing up, that this should have been done a lot differently, or if you would double down and say, no, they're doing it just right, that weird skit was the right thing to do, skipping the... Um, the dinner was the right thing to do or uh, her behavior during that interview. It was great. So let me know that too. Well, guys, that's all I've got for now. This is Carlton and I am out.